back in Korakuen Hall for day four of the G1 Climax. Hi everyone, we keep rolling along in the G1 with the second round of B block matches. First up, I want to apologize for this video not going out sooner. But unfortunately yesterday I had a lot of travel delays and our rail system in the south of England is a bit of a mess at the moment. It has been for a few months now. An attendance of 1,744 people for day four. Uh, that's virtually the same amount as Friday for day two. And the opening match, Yoshihashi versus Tomoaki Honma. Uh, both come into this match on two points. Uh, it was, they were evenly matched throughout the match. Uh, this wasn't one of those matches where someone dominated for 70% of the match and then you had the late comeback. I'm getting a bit bored of seeing those kind of matches so it was good to see uh, it kept even throughout this. Uh, there were a couple of great spots where Yoshihashi had Honma in the butterfly lock and he also teased the pump handle half Nelson driver, the Karma again. But Homer managed to reach for the, the ropes on both occasions, but it was just a nicely timed execution with both those ideas. Uh, Homer picked up the win in the end with a diving Kakeshi, uh, which was the follow up to an over the shoulder reverse pile driver, the Kakeshi Otoshi. Uh, it was a three and a half star match in my book. Very good to open up the tournament matches for the day. And with two wins already, I think we can say Honma's already had a huge performance in this G1 Climax as a whole. Um, the sky's the limit for him right now. Evil versus Yuji Nagata, both come into this match on two points apiece. Uh, Evil attacked Nagata as soon as he got into the ring actually. He was j literally just coming off the top rope as he came into the ring and he attacked him. Uh, they did the chair around the neck spot shortly afterwards as well. Uh, the match didn't really have anything of interest until the, the finish, really, the last 30 seconds, where Nagata hit his backdrop suplex and then hit it a second time, held on, picked up the win, and he goes to four points now in the tournament. I gave the match three stars. It was a solid match. Next match, Kenny Omega versus Toriano. Both come in winless. No points for either one yet. Uh, this was the comedy match that I think a lot of people had it out to be beforehand. Uh, Kenny Omega did his human chainsaw um, move at one point. We had two significant low blows in the match. Uh, first one was when Yano was behind the referee and then Omega went behind Yano and with the referee not being able to see, uh, Omega hit the, the low blow there. The second low blow came when Omega was taking a gulp of water from a bottle at ringside. And then Yano hit the low blow on Omega and the spray that came out of Omega's mouth from it um, blinded the referee temporarily, so he, he didn't see. Uh, then Omega later on hit a running knee, went for the pinfall, didn't get it. He was cradled shortly after, afterwards by Yano trying to get out the quick pinfall, didn't get it. And then Omega hit a second high impact running knee, you could hear it all around Koraku and Hall, and he takes the pinfall after that to pick up the win and two points. Omega's on the board. Uh, if you're going to rate it with the other matches it'd be two and three quarter stars but in terms of comedy value it was probably about four stars. It was really funny. You should definitely check it out. Nakajima versus Shibata. Uh, Nakajima comes on comes into the match with two points. Shibata still obviously didn't beat Honma on day two. Uh, there was a big spot where they both ran at each other and basically hit the big boot simultaneously, taking each other out. Uh, there was an another like really interesting thing that I haven't seen before in wrestling, which is where Shibata had Nakajima in a body stretch, and Nakajima turned him and just like was egging him on to like stretch him harder, push him to his limits. Uh, yeah, just something I've never seen before, really. It was your typical sort of never open weight. Uh, slash Shibata match and in the end Shibata won with the PK and picks up his first win of the G1 and two points. It was a three and three quarter match for me. Very good. Uh, definitely worth seeking out. I'm not sure if it quite lived up to the hype some people had for it though. And in the main event you had Tetsuya Naito versus the IWGP Intercontinental Champion Michael Elgin. 
Both came in with zero points, both needing a win. Uh, this was a fantastic match, possibly the best, one of the best matches in the G1 so far. A couple of great spots had Elgin hitting a top rope powerbomb uh, for a very near fall. The finish had Elgin uh, attempting another suplex slash brain buster and then it was reversed into the first Destino fr from Naito and then he managed to pick up uh, Elgin and go for the second Destino to pick up the win. Two points go to Naito. I gave it four and a quarter stars. Uh, possibly the best match of the tournament so far. For me, it's probably tied with Tanahashi Sonata, but I could see this being maybe a four and a half, uh, looking at it in hindsight later on. I think uh, after that match, I'm definitely thinking Naito and Elgin are going to be the B-block MVPs of the tournament. Um, and that goes uh, that fits with what I have in my pre-tournament predictions with those two finishing the top two spots of the whole block as well. Grading the show, I'd probably give it a B plus. It was a very good show, consistently good throughout, uh, highlighted by possibly the best match of the tournament. Just two for five on predictions for day four. I had predicted Naito and Shibata to win their matches, but got the other three all wrong. Uh, eight out of 20 total so far my pre-tournament predictions. I need to pick up some wins somewhere. B-block standings after day four you have Nagata and Honma leading the block both with two wins and four points each. Uh, several wrestlers on two points, Evil, Nakajima, Shibata, Yoshihashi, Naito and Kenny Omega with all on two points. And the Intercontinental Champion Michael Elgin and Toriano both still on zero points yet to pick up a win. I have two matches to look out for. But on day five, uh, Tenzan versus Marafuji should be quite interesting, and Okada versus Goto. We've seen them go before. It's going to be interesting to see what that match is like as well. Until next time, peace.